Hi, welcome to IAT Creators YouTube channel. I am Jan Set from IAT Creators and in this channel we would like to share our knowledge around IAT with you. In today's video I would like to show you an end-to-end -end IoT integration using IoT Creators platform. But before that let's briefly talk about IoT Creators. IoT Creators provide an access to cellular IoT connectivity which makes it easier to get started with IoT. So we provide an access to cellular IoT networks like narrowband IoT and LTEM, but our platform is also able to operate with LoRaWAN devices, so you don't need to pick any low power wide area network technology, instead you can use it you can use whatever you prefer for your use case. So with the platform, you don't need to worry about device management or message brokerage. Uh, you can directly forward your data from your device to your application endpoint via webhooks. It's important to note that the platform is device agnostic, so you can pick any device that you would like to use for your use case. Also, you don't need to stick to a single endpoint. You can use any endpoint that is widely available in the market, or you can also forward your data to a custom endpoint for your needs. You can just get your data via webhooks from our platform and visualize it in wherever endpoint that you would like. In today's video, I would like to show you an end-to-end -end IoT integration using IoT Creators. For this purpose, we will use Tingi91 device from Nordic Semiconductor. This is a very cool cellular IoT prototyping platform, uh, which is built around NRF9160 SIP, uh, which can enable use cases with narrowband IoT, LTEM and GNSS. It is also packed with a bunch of sensors for temperature, humidity, gas resistance and so on. So it is a very great device to get started and develop your first application, get your first sensor data application for example. But today we will keep things a bit simple and we will configure it as a serial LTE modem, a narrowband IoT modem let's say and we will connect to our network. So let's go over the block diagram of today. We have the Tingi91 device on our hand and we will connect to the cellular network by using IoT Creators SIM card and we will send our first message to IoT Creators Cloud uh, using AT commands and at the end we will forward our data to our endpoint and here you can see some examples of different endpoints but you can, as I mentioned earlier, you can pick any endpoint that, that you like and you can just forward your data there. So let's go to atcreators.com. Uh, I already have an account, I already created my account, but if you are just started with uh, developing your solution with IoT Creators, first you need to create your account and go to your platform. Uh, apparently I don't have a project yet, first I will create my first IoT Creators project, uh, which is called Styler Kits. Um, and here are different options of getting your data. You can get your data via webhooks and off the internet or via the public public internet. But today we will use uh, webhooks and we will get our data off the internet. Uh, so in IoT Creators platform, you can get a free SIM card for free wherever you are in the world. It is a very good opportunity if you want to test if you have an IoT network, for example, narrowband IoT network in your location. You can just order a SIM card for free and test it for your solution and then you can proceed with uh, bigger amount, higher amounts of SIM cards. But today I will say I already got an IoT Creator SIM card because I have one here. And I will proceed with creating my projects. So here I can see that my project is being created. So let's go to our project. So the first step is that we need to register our device to our project. And for that purpose, we need to use the IMEI number of the device. So IMEI, it is depending on the device, but sometimes it is written on top of the device or in the box, or in my case, in both places. So you need to say register device and write the IMEI number of your device. And for today, we will communicate via UDP protocol. But as you can see here, the platform is, platform is able to support different protocols. So you can use non-IP, co-op, MQTT, LoRaWAN as well. But I am picking UDP. And I can see that my device is registered. So from, from your project, you can do many different things. You can do your device management from here. You can see your API credentials if you want to forward your data using APIs. And also you can set up your application server. Uh, application server means that you can give the, the you can give your project a callback URL, which is the your which should be your application endpoint where you would like to see your data. 
Uh, and as I also mentioned earlier, you can pick any different application endpoint that are av widely available in the market, like AWS, Microsoft Azure, or whatever you would like. But for the sake of simplicity, I will use a mock REST API tool today, which is called Bceptor, and create an endpoint for us. So let's say my first endpoint. And our first endpoint is created. Let's copy our endpoint link and go back to iotcreators.com and have our callback URL here. Let's save it. And now, according to IT Creators platform, looks like our device is ready. We have our device IMEI registered. We have our endpoint already set up. We just need to, don't forget to plug in our SIM card to get connectivity. Let's do it together. Okay, our device is also ready with the SIM card. So we need to program our device. So for that, we are using the desktop tool from Nordic Semiconductor, which is called NRF Connect. So the Nordic Semiconductor device has both modem layer and an application layer. And in order to get started, you need to flash both a modem firmware and an application firmware. And for that, let's go to the programmer application. And in order to flash a firmware, we need to put our device to the bootloader mode. So, and you do this by pressing this button on top of the device. And while pressing the button, you need to turn on your device and your device should be in bootloader mode. Otherwise, it won't be possible to flash a firmware. Let's select our device. And I choose the firmware. There are very detailed guides from Nordic Semiconductor to get started with Tingy. They explain which firmware you need to pick, which uh, application firmware you need to choose, but I will link them down below so you can maybe have more detailed information about that from Nordic Semiconductor. So the uploading the modern firmware will take a while, so let's give it some time. Uh, so I see that my modern firmware is updated and I can restart my device. Just to be on the safe side, I, I can never be sure if it is still in the bootloader mode or not, so I always restart it. Okay, so now we will flash the second layer, which is the application firmware. Again, putting the device to the bootloader mode using the same method. And for the application firmware, you can develop it yourself. You can use any sensor or any uh, GPS receiver inside the device. But today we are programming it as a serial LT modem and we will communicate by using AT commands as our very first step. That is why I am using the serial LT modem application that is already inside the Nordic Semiconductors library. You can just download it uh, from their website and find it there. Let's give it some more time. It is quicker than the modem firmware. Okay, so now my application firmware is also flashed. I am restarting my device and now it's time to communicate with the device. For communication, I am also using a tool inside the NRF Connect for desktop application called LT Link Monitor, but you can use any kind of SSH client uh, or like a serial communication tool to communicate by using AT commands. I'm using my device and let's start with the, with the comments. So the first AT command is a Nordic proprietary command that sets the modem system mode to enable narrowband IoT. And I return OK, so everything seems all right. And the second command actually sets the amount of network information that you would like to get. And as a rule of thumb, the higher it is, the more information that you get from the network. So I set it to five. But also here, it's important to note that AT commands are slightly changing according to your, uh, your hardware. So you need to check the documentation of your hardware manufacturer to see the most update up to date and the right right comments and my third command configures connection parameters by setting up the pdp type and apn so here you can see the apn address of iot creators and now let's set our device to its full functionality and give it some time to attach to the network yeah that was quick and looks like my device is connected to lte network but let's see Yeah, I am connected to the Telekom Deutschland network right now. So it looks like I'm ready to send my first message to this server. For that purpose, I am opening up a UDP socket using another Nordic proprietary command for UDP sockets. 
and the last comment gives the server address and the port ID of my of my cloud. Yeah, looks like my looks like my message is sent. I return OK, but let's go back to iotcreators.com and see if our message is there. Uh, here you can from the platform you can see your latest payload, which is pretty cool. Yeah, here I see a message. My first hello world message is in the platform, and as you might remember that we forwarded our data to our application endpoint. And yeah, in my application endpoint, I can see my data as a hexadecimal, in a hexadecimal format and I can just convert it into and see that I sent my first hello world message. So yeah, now we completed our end-to-end -end integration using IoT creators and managed to forward the data from our device to our application endpoint. Uh, but the next steps would be getting some more in meaningful data from our device, let it be the temperature information of the room or be it like an asset tracker application where you get the location data of your device in a, in a certain frequency and forward our data to a, another endpoint where we can visualize it in a dashboard. Uh, but I, I believe it's a very good starting point and from that point on you can use, uh, you can customize it according to your needs. So hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We would like to proceed with different videos in our channel. We will do tutorials on, on how to integrate a certain device or how to integrate to a certain endpoint. But as well, we also would like to give general information about uh, the topic of IoT in general. So please let us know in the comments what you want to hear more about, about IoT in this channel. I would be happy to provide you the respective content. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. And I will hope to see you next time. Bye.